Hey everyone, I'm Nico from Licks of the Beast. In this video, we're going to tackle that really cool interlude section from Back in the Village. I'm going to show you exactly how both Adrian and Dave's parts are played, and I'm also going to explain why they're played that way. Back in the Village is one of those polarizing songs where people either love it and consider it a highly underrated track, or they hate it and they think it's by far the worst song on Power Slave. Guitarists typically belong to the first group because of all the cool pedal point riffs. It sounds awesome and it's so much fun to play. And if you're like me, you've probably struggled to figure out exactly what they were doing in that middle section. I learned it a few different ways and it never felt exactly right. I even did a full cover on this channel where I'm playing that part in a way that has the correct notes, but the wrong fingering and articulation. So I was playing Dave's part like this. And Adrian's part like this. My eureka moment came when I realized two things. First of all, that the beginning of Adrian's part was the same lick he plays at the beginning of his solo in Aces High. And also that this kind of thing here It's not the way Adrian approaches the guitar. You know, he does things more like this. So as soon as I realized that, everything clicked and fell right into place immediately. Now before I show you how to play the interlude part, let's start with a quick look at what's going on musically. So the section is in the key of D minor, which is interesting because although it is the saddest of all keys according to the great Nigel Tufnell, this part is actually quite uplifting. Just to make it easy to understand how they're building this section from the D minor scale, I'm going to play the melody of both parts without the D pedal point and I'll stay within that 10th fret box position. So I'll play the correct notes, but not with the actual fingering. And again, this is just to explain how the melody comes from the D natural minor scale, starting with Dave's part. Now Adrian plays a similar melody, but he's inverting the order of the intervals. So where Dave is playing a pattern of going down a second, back to the first note, and then down a third, Adrian goes down a third, back to the first note, and then down a second. So his part is like this. noticed he also adds two chromatics in there. There's this B natural and this C sharp here. So this is the melody. But now how do we phrase it with the D pedal so that it makes sense? Well as I mentioned earlier the basic idea is the same as the lick that Adrian plays in Aces High. So in this case it would be like this. So most likely, Adrian was playing around with this lick, with this idea, and he just ended up using it in two songs on Power Slave. So we're playing all the notes on these two adjacent strings, the G and the D, and we're pulling off to the D string as our pedal point. So this is the pattern we're going to be using throughout the whole section for both Dave and Adrian's parts. So finally, let's get to it. Here is the correct way to play the interlude section from Back in the Village, starting with Dave's part. Mm -hmm. 
And now let's do it slowly. And here is Adrian's part. Now let's do that a little bit slower. That sounds and feels much more natural, doesn't it? Now let's listen to both parts played together. That sounds pretty cool, doesn't it? Now the pace of this part is absolutely relentless. So even though the articulation of the riffs isn't particularly challenging from a technical standpoint, it is very easy to mess up when there aren't any pauses. So the key point to nailing this one down is to break down the parts into smaller sections and practice them a lot on their own to get them into your muscle memory. That way you won't have to think about them when you're playing along with the full song. Because you definitely won't have time to think once you're going at full speed. I really hope this was interesting and that I was able to shed some new light on this old riff. I also hope that this video will encourage you to really study the music you enjoy. Understanding a guitarist's playing style will certainly help unlock some of the secrets to their licks and riffs. It might also open your eyes to a technique or an idea that you can build on to create something completely fresh and interesting. That's it for this week, I hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure to leave a thumbs up so that the almighty algorithm knows that you did, and please do consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll be back next week with more Licks of the Beast.